Okay, so we've got um, round two of the uh, the winner's bracket. This will be Rob Kimbrim playing Rayquaza versus Joe uh, Bernard playing Buzzwell Lycanroc with uh, no Tapu Lele. I don't know if that's worth mentioning, but well, we had a couple of um, pretty bad technicalities with, uh, with the commentary, so instead we've got Rob here doing sort Hello. of retrospective of uh yeah of uh, of the game that he had against joe can ask him ask him about his plays obviously the game's already been played so we know the outcome but you don't <laughs> okay so rob here's going first so uh rob how do you uh how do you approach this matchup then um it's quite a hard matchup uh depending on whether first the player's money, well, my opponent is smart, I guess. Um, they would have been, and it depends on if they play um, a lot of baby Buzzwell, because yeah. taking one prizes at a time is pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, to win, especially when they're taking, uh, they're just doing spread and taking two at a time. And also, liking what could be pretty, a big pain because you're filling up your bench very quickly. Yeah, of course. Because basically, early on, you want three at least, maybe raise down Latios, uh, Latias, sorry, and Alele is inevitably going to be played. So your bench will probably get pretty full. Yeah, so it's like it's pretty much a guarantee they're going to get um, two prizes from a Lycan Rock GX. Um, the best bet, obviously, is to just try and catch up the Rock Ruffs. Yeah, yeah. So dragging up the rock cross before they can evolve. Yeah, but I guess hoping that they put down GXs, as in like hoping that their hand pretty much sort of forces that approach. Yeah, um, here I play some acrobikes. Uh, I was hoping to obviously hit energy to maybe get a nice latias. What you want to do because you'll be taking lots, of maybe one prizes. You kind of want to get sup first. Yeah. But and get a lot of energies and discard maybe attack with Latia straight away. But um, I, I probably should have Tapu Lele to, to thin my deck, get a nice supporter out first. But I'm, I wanted to keep my options open to what supporter I wanted to play for my next turn. Oh, okay. See, I was going to. I I sort of thought the opposite that basically because you will get a Sycamore, <laughs> that it's like, it's fine. You can just let the supporters go. Yeah, I was most likely going to get a Sycamore because <laughs> Unless I already like... played the Cynthia, so... Yeah, of course. Unless it's three Sycamore that just uh, find their way into your discard pile from that. <laughs> but that's not very likely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I feel like I should have probably gone on the just complete aggressive straight away. Um... So an interesting thing here, really, is that um, you don't play Fury Belts. So... No. The Which baby makes it even harder. <laughs> of course, yeah. The baby Buzzwells, you'd you'd be fine with four energy fury belt, but of course you need five energy. I don't think five energy is that hard to hit, but it's maybe hard to consistently keep when they are like two hitting you with their baby Buzzwells. Yeah. Yeah, you um I think yeah, you need four with a fury belt for baby buzz, six with the fury belt for the um GX. Uh, well, GX. Um, but the the issue with that is for Zoro matchups, they got 20 HP more, and the Fury Belt really uh, wrecks the maths. Yeah, of course, because you can have just six energy in the choice band, and I guess the idea is that Zoro is probably the more expected uh, deck or archetype to see. Yeah, so I can't build my deck to beat that. Uh, it can beat buzz but if they're playing heavy uh, baby buzz then it gets a bit harder um like yeah. here it's like yeah i'm getting a sycamore i knew i was getting a sycamore i should have done that last time to incredibly <laughs> hit that energy in the discard yeah um, i mean it would have been a slightly higher out uh slightly higher odds even the thing here though since joe did play the guzma just to do a bit of chip damage you um you promoting anything last turn sort of didn't really matter because you'd have to try and find a way to retreat that Rayquaza anyway. Yeah, uh, I think I played the Floatstone before the Cynthia at the time, so yeah, I was I definitely th retreating that turn anyway. Yeah, 
I think I think maybe maybe one option you could have uh, could have attempted, which actually just still wouldn't have really worked, is just going really aggressive, building building up one ray entirely before going for the others, just so that you can kill the Deancey if he didn't manage to get the retreat. Yeah, um, even putting 90 on a buzz would have been, or whatever, 90, 120, 150 yeah, yeah. on a buzz would have been great, even 180, because then you can KO it later on with the Latias. Yeah, um, absolutely. So it was a bit of, uh, even though it obviously didn't matter then, it was just a bit of a misplay on my behalf. Um, so interesting there, notes you with the Palpad, basically shuffled everything except the N and Cynthia. Do you want to just like, I guess, comment on that? Um, I'm super behind at the moment. <laughs> I'm, it's like I haven't got an attack of turn two. Yeah. <laughs> um, if it was a big attack or a Latias attack, I haven't got any damage going on. And I just needed, I just needed to, uh, to draw a sickle, really. Yeah, and, so you went really like. I mean, you have to have some Guzmas ready for the late game, but I guess you just kind of went kind of in on just getting a Sycamore or a Guzma, either to take the knockout or, well, to draw and hit a float stone. <laughs> yeah, um, here I wasn't sure to carry with the Rockruff, because I know they can just set up a Rockruff uh, and Lycan Rock in one turn with Elixir. Yeah. So I was like, Joe hasn't been drawn that great. So I was like, do I go for the Remoraid, or do I go for the Rockcraft, or do I limit his damage output? It was a really hard decision. Yeah, I honestly. If, I don't know if I made the right one, to be fair. I, th but... I think the Rockcraft was a good pick. I actually liked all the options, really. In, in a way, it's a hard decision, because none of them are that bad. Yeah, because without his draw support, then he's not going to be doing it as much. Yeah. But it's and... like, if he has a Sycamore in his hand, then it's like, he's Gucci, so... So I think, um, I mean, yeah, that and also Deancey is basically the only buff damage aside from the strong energies, Beast Energy, Choice Band. Um, yeah, that, basically the only on-board buff damage. No Regirock in this. Um, it sort of very, very much limits, would limit his damage, but I guess the, the Rockruff was probably the right call. Yeah, maybe. Hard to it, say. It is hard to say. Maybe maybe the two. And I think looking back, it looks like the artillery would have, uh, well, the Remoraid would have been better because he would have had a dead artillery in his hand hmm. and not be able to draw out of it because uh, I believe he gets everything or something this turn. And interestingly enough, Joe doesn't actually have Lele in this list. Yeah, that was, that was weird. I think someone didn't play Lele. I um, think Tord at Sheffield didn't. And so maybe Joe's going for a similar build to that. Yeah, so... I think Todd copied Joe's list or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, Todd. Sounds, sounds, yeah, sounds a bit fishy to me. Todd travelled forward in time, <laughs> copied the list, then travelled back in time, and yeah. then played a list that is different to this one anyway. To be fair, if I was ripping off Joe, I'd do exactly that. Me too. No, me yeah. too, of course. Um, but yeah, he's taking a nice KO here. Yeah, very nice. He, he got the Guzman then. Basically, you you are kind of right about the uh, the Remoraid because the Octillery meant he could draw. But he might not have had Guzma in hand. Obviously, you can't see. But yeah, the Octillery just meant higher chance of drawing into it. Yeah. Um... He does but... remove no energy here off the board. This this would have been my the best chance for me to win a. Uh to win basically if I had the um if I had the KO turn two on something because then mm -hmm. it put me on four prizes the lot the previous turn. Yeah. But now he can just take um two prizes, two prizes, two prizes. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad that it, the fact you missed, I think it doesn't like seal the game, but it, it just makes it much harder yeah. for you. Like, I'd have to use Latias one turn instead. Yeah. And have to hope he doesn't have a Gizmo or Evolve or Rockruff. Kind of sucks there that uh, that Acrobike. Well, I mean, it was inevitable the Acrobike was going to give you a Gizmo slash Sycamore at one point because you put so many back in. But yeah. Just a bit of a shame that's uh, how it played out there. Yeah. So, um, only had like 10 cards left in deck. Um, 
at this point. You just really want to thin it so you get the stuff you want. Yeah, Ray does tend to mill itself a reasonable amount and then, you know, just grab the last couple uh, couple of prizes with the, the goods that's left over, basically. Which I believe you've only got one, actually, and it's in your hand. Yeah, so I couldn't stick them all well. Not this turn, but I'll no. talk about it in my next turn. Yeah, uh, and of course you'd be going down to uh, two cards in, in deck with um, two KOs still need two... Uh, three prizes still needed, so a GX KO and a non-GX. Yeah, exactly. So Joe, then, depending on his read on, you know, what's in your discard, whether he's looked at your list, if he's had a chance to see it, or... So I don't think um, we've given exact lists. But no, I, think I, I, he... don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know at the time. But I guess my list was up at the end of round one anyway. Yeah, so yeah. He I think taken a cheeky little look. And then basically you could know that you're sort of out <laughs> as such of um actually no wait, I believe you might have a good surprise. Um We'll have to How see, many... man. We'll have yeah. to see. How many do you play in this list? I play, I play three Gizma. Oh, um... okay then no you don't. <laughs> oh <laughs> so you you been paying better attention to me, even though this is just literally yeah. thirty minutes ago, forty minutes ago. I know. <laughs> but um... yeah, basically um so essentially, what that means is if you did have to sick a more away this Guzma in hand, and Joe had a real, like, proper look at your list before, he literally could just leave a non-GX up, and then leave a non-GX up. Exactly, and just pass. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> on, I mean, that didn't happen, spoilers. But, um, yeah, instead, uh, I mean, I assume you don't actually sick a more the, the next turn and probably just have to play the Guzma anyway. But Joe here's Getting the beast ring for the knockout. Yeah, it was pretty nice. I definitely should have cared the uh, the rubber <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, and, I, I, um... so he only gets the single beast ring, which is obviously still like it's still annoying because it gave him the knockout. Which if he didn't hit, you actually had the chance to uh, to really pull it back. Yeah. Um, so you do I get a knockout here though. Yeah, but we've got, um, he's still got a Rockcraft threatening. He, I don't think at this point he had to use any elixirs. Right, um, okay. <laughs> and I've got a 60, I've got a 60 damaged Rayquaza, so unfortunately it wasn't at 4 HP or anything. Yeah. So I, I wasn't safe from a Lycanroc. Oh no, of course, because Lycanroc, let's say, you know, it, it just hit the vanilla 150. Yeah, and also I've got the Lele on the bench, so he could he could just target that. Anyway. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess with strong, he'd have to specifically yeah, have that. The biggest weakness with Ray Quas is going on odd prizes. Yeah. Because then you, you have to force them to take a prize on your Latias, which obviously isn't bad, but it kind of just you're kind of just hoping they don't have a Guzma around it. Yeah, you you sort of have to have to make it so that the Latias is you know a big feature or heavily in play. And that they have to kill it, or it's gonna, you know, set up, set you up too much. That yeah. doesn't really happen in this matchup, though. No, because they've got like three or four Guzma, and then they've got uh, one or two Lycan rocks, so they've always got a good chance to uh, catch her around it. Yeah, and the issue is you just loading up a few more energy. Then actually, the biggest deal for them because they can take one hit knockouts. Yeah, no, of course. So my so, plan was to obviously hold that Guzma in hand, attach to a ray, and then... Yeah, of course. Well, we can um, see here, Joe plays strong, uh, discards a couple energy with Sycamore and the Beast energy, actually. Um, it wouldn't have mattered if he attached the Beast, I guess, to Rockruff for, no. for, um, <laughs> for style points. But uh, no, the... Um, yeah, the, the strong goes down. Plays super odd. 3NG going back in, you're probably bricking yourself right now. And yeah, and it's just like you know what's gonna happen. It's like you just I I I in in the second tier, and I'm just like, wait, he hasn't played any elixirs. Yeah. And yeah. I think he even messages me that he's just like, three elixirs, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh god. <laughs> so it's, it's like he's got like five or six energy in deck. It's like there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so he's still got three to draw with Octillery. Obviously, we don't know his hand, but he could have just had an elixir in that hand and wanted to draw a few. 
You uh, were. I didn't realise you could chat. <laughs> You're a bit shocked by that idea. Um, yeah, I was like, wait, you can make customised <laughs> emotes, and then uh, I'm like, so... oh, I completely forgot that was like a chat feature. One thing I actually did forget is not only did he need um need an elixir and it hitting, he actually needed the lichen rock. Yeah, um, he did. T I, I think he plays two, doesn't he? Yeah, up to that ultra ball, he hadn't actually got it yet, but of course, yeah. With, he... with a, a fourteen card deck, it's yeah. I think given given the number of outs he had, he was probably uh probably going to be getting this. But yeah, a bit unfortunate for you because slightly uh shaky setup. It was it was a, it was a slow start. And this deck, if you have a if you don't do anything turn two, whether it's attack with Latias or attack in general, you're most likely going to lose. Especially since the buzz was just hitting you for the extra damage. Enough yeah, that, exactly. I believe it did three hits in you before you really got an attack off. Yeah, that was some fun. And of course, setting up the snipe damage meant that he had a slightly easier time KOing you. But I don't think it mattered. Yeah, um, in this second match, uh, well, this this is the uh, the <laughs> forsaken set of second match. It's not a real second match. Uh, Joe was a very naughty boy, <laughs> and uh, ac accidentally selected to go first. Despite it's the like that how OP is that? It's just like <laughs> if you would, you get to go first your next game. <laughs> well, I think he uh, has to concede here, like to go to to you know a proper game. I'm not sure if uh, the jury's out on whether we'll count it as a proper win for you. I think. I, I think, think we I might. Think it he conceded technically. I think we might just to make Joe, you know, cry a little bit. Not loads, but <laughs> re-roll. Yeah, re-roll. He <laughs> says, "There's no re-roll on PTCGO. There's only a concede, my friend." So oh. that makes the game one all now. <laughs> Easiest win of your life. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. That one was pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, thing is here. I don't know how much has been talked about in terms of Joe as a player. He's obviously not here because didn't. We're not doing a win and winner and losers interview. Given yeah, the... he's not. He's not with us anymore <laughs> after that the... game. <laughs> the nature of these technicalities means. Um, <laughs> I think we're just not going to do that. So I'll just talk a little bit about him. He's that omnipoke guy, and uh, that's it. So, yeah, now, game two or three, you obviously are starting. Yes. Uh, so, okay, you got you got a mysterious treasure. I assume you have to grab a lele with that. Yeah, unfortunately, there was no supporter. Because um, it would have been a pretty sweet start, whether it was an end symphony or obviously Sycamore, even though I had to, had to lose a super odd. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I could have just superordered that energy back in, uh, put all my uh, choice bands down and use the elixir, and then uh, discard the sycamore, or well, whatever, whether well, the sycamore was a different card. So yeah. I'll still have one energy in a discard if I draw into a Rayquaza. I think the uh, sycamore there would have actually been fine as well. Um, honestly, yeah, I agree. I think a sycamore would have been bad because the choice bands aren't doing anything. Yeah. Right well, now. You... You could still at least have one attached to the active ray. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think I've been playing against so many Zoarks with this deck. I've been I've been forced to save on your choice bands, choice yeah. bands, so it didn't get blurred away or something. So interesting there. You you got mysterious treasure. Well, you you only had mysterious treasure as an option off the acro bike, but then elected to not play it. Uh, why is um, that? It was it was more in case I got a. It's like I could get a Lele and fit my deck and something, but I was just kind of hoping not to use it on a Lele and get a support to my next turn, so I could just use it for a Rayquaza instead or a Latias. Oh, for silence. Oh, I think internet, Jake. <laughs> internet, Jake. I think Jake's internet has disconnected. So you guys are stuck with me now. So. That was a shocking first turn. You thought that turn was bad. Wait until you see this turn. Just to take an 80 damage from a baby buzz. He has no GXs on the board. And it doesn't look like I'm taking any prizes this turn. So I have to uh, Mysterious Treasure for another supporter. Well, another Lele to get a supporter. I think this is when I realized I prized two Sycamore. 
Um, so that was not good. I'm discarding quite a bit of resources with the super ones quite early on and wasting an elixir on a Lele instead of trying to get that onto a Rayquaza. I was going to attach here, but then I was like, nope, wait, what if I get Floatstone, Latias? So I opted for that. Attach the choice band, might come in. Uh, might be handy one day. Yeah, the, oh, the Jake, you're Sorry, back. I am back. The The choice <laughs> band on the Lele isn't isn't the end of the world, I guess, because you can always get into a you know, Boswell for a two, uh, Boswell GX for a two hit KO. So if they put one energy, you get 90 first. Then you add another energy, getting the knockout. Not ideal because it's not a Rayquaza, but well, attaching to two different Leles is definitely less ideal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, I have no idea. Um, you often, well, when I say you often, I mean it can be forgotten. You can attack with a Lele. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not saying I would have done that this turn. But, yeah, oh, wow. I should have probably just put it on the Lele, so I've got something attacking going on eventually. Yeah, but just, yeah. you also have the option with, um, against a baby Boswell to do, uh, 60 into 80 as well. Strangely, yeah. solid action, actually quite solid numbers with the Lele for this, this particular matchup, obviously. You know so what, two hits. I, I think, I think... Looking back, just take out a Rayquaza, put in the fourth Lele. Um, I think at this point, you play four Lele, zero Rayquaza, and that's it. I, I had one Latias, just to... <laughs> just for nothing. Yeah, um, uh, so he put another 80 damage on the board, even after Phil blowing away a choice band. And it's just like, that's just one... <laughs> that's one dead Ray boy. He, he, he can get KO'd by... Um, a Buzz GX whenever yeah. he wants because I'm not going to be attacking with that really. So, I mean, at least well, one thing we noticed is he did not get the knockout. That's that's about it. Unfortunately, you're still in a pretty dire position in terms of your setup versus his. Yeah, um, and I was saying while, while you were gone, I was saying he's got no, um, he's got no um, GX out. So I'm yeah, gonna be taking. Yeah. I'm gonna put, be putting in. Uh, I'll, I'll be on four prizes eventually, and I've got a really badly damaged Rayquaza GX. And um, yeah, so he, he almost. He, he, uh, that's basically a free two prizes whenever. Exactly. So and he's gonna be putting on like 150 or 170 onto another. Ray. Yeah. Sorry, but... I mean, no, no, no. It's fine. I mean, yeah, you're you're right. Pretty much, what's gonna happen is, you'll you will go down to four prizes almost guaranteed. That allows the sledgehammer possibly for a knockout. Uh, let's even go as far as say as most likely, because of all the buffs. He has lost two choice bands now, I guess, but you haven't got a knockout as a return. Yeah. Um, then, I think I think oh sorry. No, no, no. Uh, oh, it's, it's it's fine. Say uh, say your point. Um no, I think here I, I, I think I should have gone for the KO on the baby buzz. But I was trying to maybe bait out a buzz roll GX. Ah, uh, okay, I see. So, um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I can, I can understand that. Basically, you're going for the fact that something is damaged on your bench. Hopefully, Buzzwell GX. Hopefully, you know, he thinks, oh, let's just play Buzzwell GX to exactly, to and then I that. can take one prize and then another, and uh, then two, so he doesn't get the full yeah. baby buzz. Unfortunately, um, I think that won't happen because <laughs> of Joe, but. But I also thought of that because of Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, as well, maybe is that the um, given given his board state, if it was a Buzz GX, it'd probably be with a Guzma. No, exactly. I I'm, I'm just in a really bad. Yeah, I think at this uh, point you sort of take what outs or what ideas you can think of and just pray. <laughs> <laughs> um. It wasn't fun, this game, uh, this game. It was funny. It <laughs> was definitely funny, but... Yeah, so here he gets a knockout, goes down to four prizes. He does actually kill your damage ray, so that's... I guess that's probably better than him killing a non-damage ray right now. It is, but... 
Yeah, I'm out of resources. I use both my super rods. Oh dear. Um, I've got most of my energy on board. The rest of the energy in discard and some of the prizes. I'm not getting get to my prizes exactly that quick. No. You do have... You do have a knockout here, so obviously that's something. But yeah, I guess I guess it's because I mean Rayquaza versus Boswell. It's it's not bad or anything at all for for Ray, but it's really helped by the Fury belts and also this particular build. Really was kind of honing in on that Zoroark matchup where yeah, <laughs> where you just go okay, six energy choice band KO, six energy choice band KO. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very hard to match up, I'd say, without the choice bands. Yeah, yeah. But then that... obviously you ruin your buzz roll match up. So with the Rayquaza ability, does it automatically happen as you play it or is it a May? Sorry, what? The Rayquaza GX's ability. Mm-hmm. Does it happen? Do, do you have to discard three, or is it? Uh, no, you don't have to discard three. But if you if you don't, it's been a, a second part of the ability does activate, so you couldn't go yeah. to discard. So yeah, it's kind of a bit bit of a pain because you're on eight card tier. Discarding three could be pretty bad. Yeah, I, I don't want to bench it because of the Lycan one. Yeah, of course. So Joe has had a rock rough down this whole time basically but yeah i think um given how this game's going it's probably just going to focus on two hits with boswell till you've taken four prizes at uh, two yeah. prizes sorry the uh he then gets beast ring or two gets a sledgehammer has a fully powered up buzz gx and um potential for a powered up lycan rock and then you lose i guess it's I'm bleeding out very, I'd say slowly, <laughs> but I'm actually, it's actually having it very. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah it's... It, it, at this point, it's just nothing I can do. I'm just looking at my discards, trying to think of anything. I'm not using my power pads because I'm just hoping to draw my my end in my deck. Oh, so it is still in your deck here. Yeah, 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 it's like I've got no energy in hand. So, uh, to be fair, actually, I could have power pads. I think it was last time I did a power pad. Yeah. I could have power padded my Guzmas because he's still got artillery. And yeah. I could just uh, retreat with one of the Lales or the Latias. But what did you do instead of all of that we're about to see? Um, Was that this turn? No, that was this turn, but I had the power pad in my hand last turn. Ah, okay. So, yeah, the power pad shuffles back in two Guzmas. Obviously pretty nice. <laughs> Drawing the Sycamore again off the prizes. Yep, exactly what I needed. <laughs> the most important card there. Yeah, like, if there's an N in that nine cards, obviously, you'd, you'd probably want it once this Ray has gone down. But uh, uh, it's just more, oh, he's got artillery still, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think it's still okay because, five, I mean, five cards. Well, he'll be on, he will be on, yeah, eight, eight cards or something, a six to eight from the prize. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's still just better. Of course, if you had the opportunity to Guzma that artillery up at some point, that would have been great. Yeah, so I think I should have used the power pad the turn before to try and get the Guzma. Mm -hmm. but yes, the buzz, though, would have then easily got, grabbed a knockout off you this turn. Yep, and I would have been needing energy. Um... And then. <laughs> and then. But then maybe, yeah, maybe that would have been the, the right, the right course of action is it's kind of hard to say joe here just gets a, it's a nice little beast ring he's got a beast ring and sledgehammer turn anyway so um and mate well probably a second beast ring turn if if you only again take one prize which he's oh okay i was gonna say he's gonna make sure is the case but maybe he's just taunting you by putting down that buzz gx i think he's just trying to get everything he, uh, once he, he's got everything set up, he can get another Beast Ring. Beast Ring, yeah. Yeah, he, he's got game anyway, but he's just ensuring the victory. Yeah, I think I think he's just, even though, like, yeah, sure, you could kill the Boswell GX, go down to two prizes, and then him not have another Beast Ring turn. I think if you target that thing down, you've got to deal with Swing Around and with um, uh, the attack of Lycanroc. Yeah, it's, 
and it, taking as wait, do I, yeah, I have enough energy. I just didn't have uh, another energy for my Rayquaza GX to take the. Ah, uh, right. right. Uh, but he's got Diancy still in the field, and most likely a Lycan Rock um, available to him. Yeah. So we're going to see a uh, really uh, interesting play from Rob here. Yeah, um, I didn't think I had it in me to do this. I think. I was um, contempl contemplating to um, go down to zero, see what happens, might win. <laughs> there was something, uh, something rather good about this play. As you can see here, Rob has five cards in deck. Two sycamores in hand. Um, yeah. I lose on my own terms. Well, that's you, Rob. That's you Fair. all over. <laughs> you refuse to lose except on your own terms. No, it's um yeah, it seems honestly like a rather unfortunate setup for you here. You never really really got going. You did actually have an energy left. Um, but it wasn't in my hand. Yeah. And um you maybe would have had to go for the dreamy mist, but then of course, just Lycan Rock is game over. So exactly, I knew, I, I just knew there was no chance. Like yeah, this game. there was nothing I could do. Yeah, really, really, quite unfortunate. But um, I mean, you still got, you've still got the losers bracket. Oh, oh yeah, I can't wait to play against Xerneas. Xerneas. <laughs> <laughs> not not just one person in the losers bracket is playing it. Yeah. Is it one in the is, are they both in the losers or are they uh, they're both in the losers. This was a nice little um rescue stretcher though. The rescue stretcher ultra ball ray into decking out again. <laughs> well, I just wanted to make sure I played all the cards I could possibly play. <laughs> just so that everyone can see your deck in the tournament. Yeah, so um well I guess this game was a bit more silly, so I uh, do yeah, there was just something I do, so I thought it was a little bit of fun. Yeah. Might as well make yourself laugh. <laughs> but I do apologise if um I, I won't I won't say this for Rob because I think Rob's been on point. But if uh commentary was a bit silly, it's partly because of technicalities that happen meant we've seen this. And also that game was really silly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah. But no, I hope you I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. Um I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did music. <laughs> Aww. Well, <laughs> I guess um, I guess really what this is showing is that Boswell, you can make a new aggressive deck, but Boswell's still uh, still pretty good. Yeah, no, Buzz still stays very relevant. Um, it's still a big world contender. And, yeah. And um, yeah, it's even strong against uh, uh, Rayquaza. Which well, has it, got a bit of hype. It has a game plan, at the very least, against it. I'd well, still, especially this list. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, that's right with the Fury Belts. I haven't actually tested Fury Belts properly, but so I think if the Rayquaza plays the Fury Belts, obviously, and uh, Boswell not playing Field Blower could uh, could have quite a uh, uphill struggle. But well, that wasn't the game we saw there. That was a bit of a downhill. It it was it was slide. Yeah, there was yeah. there was no uphill for me. It was it was <laughs> it was just a complete drop. <laughs> yeah, it was the cliff. That, that that's a, that's a game where you open up game two and you're like, you just ah. say to your opponent, "Hey, do you want an early lunch?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just like, well, if there was one time for me to dead draw, it's where I then don't have to play two more games. So thanks. Bye. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And the thing of it this way, um, it puts the commentary a bit shorter, the over commentary, because um, we're doing an, anal a, a, an analytic commentary, an analyst. Well, yeah, we're, just... we're, lo we're looking at it once after it's already happened. Yeah. So obviously we're, we're seeing it in hindsight. I actually, first time round, almost, I saw almost none of game two, except pretty much the end. Well, um, I hope you. I hope you enjoyed the end. <laughs> so I was, I was seeing nothing because first my internet went, and then I wasn't paying attention because of that, all the issues happening, and then I came back and I see. Um, well, <laughs> it's pretty discarded. <laughs> <my whole. laughs> yeah, I'm like, there's an energy on two different leles. One has a choice band. Rob, ha Rob's discarding his hand. What's what's going on here? But, um, yeah. <laughs> That's rather silly.
Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Um, I guess really showcasing Boswell still. Sorry, Rob. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they got to see Rayquaza showcase first round. Uh, yeah, true. Rayquaza obviously can put on the pressure, but... Um, Once it can't put on the pressure, then it's just game over for it. Yeah, it, it really needs to, I guess, is, is a way of thinking about it. It not only can put on the pressure, but it actually has to, really, to be taking games. Yeah, because there's no, like... There's sometimes you can get a nice mid-game comeback, but yeah. not against all decks. And of course, with the list with only one N, you've got a rather low chance of that happening. But those are the counts you kind of have to play because you're going all in on the four seconds. Yeah, go big or go home. Pretty much, yeah. I feel like it is a go big or go home deck. Okay, should we uh, wrap up there? We shall indeed. I can get to the drinking and forgetting about this game. <laughs> okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you enjoyed that game. And um, from the... the you know, the deepest place in my heart. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you for watching, everyone. Uh, if you like the video, do give it a like. If you're watching for the first time, if you're still listening, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, this yeah. has been Robert and Jake from Team Sneak Attack, and we will see you next time. Keep watching the sky. <laughs> Hello guys, it's Will from Team Sneak Attack here. Thank you for watching this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when we upload our next video. Remember to leave a comment in the comment section down below and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.